Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here, and I want to welcome you to this episode of The Automation Show, coming to you live from the studios here at Insights and Automation, newly renovated studios. If you may notice a little difference here from the last time we talked back in the last episode of The Automation Minute. In any case, in today's episode of The Automation Show, we're going to take a look at what comes in the box when you buy Rockwell's 5380 Experience Kit. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to switch the camera over to uh, the overhead cam here. And um, if we take a look at this, you can see this is what the box looks like here. And you can see it's called the Compact Logics 5380 Experience Kit. And this is really the least expensive way to get your hands on a 5380. I mean, this bundle here has been substantially reduced from list price. Now, if you're an educational institution, if you have the correct certification that Rockwell wants, you can actually buy the components a lot cheaper. But if you're like me, you're just uh, an educator, an instructor, um, this is probably going to be your best bet. And even if you're an end user or OEM, this is probably going to be your best bet to get your hands on the 5380, not for production use, not for putting in a machine, but for getting your people up to speed on how to use it. And you can see here, I got all this Compact Logic stuff on the bench here because I'm getting ready to film a brand new course called Compact Logics Basics or Compact Basics for short. And that's why I needed this experience kit because I wanted to cover the full range all the way from the L30 and L23 through the uh, 5370 up into the 5380. So that's why I have these all assembled here. Now, if you want to get uh, Compact Basics as it's being filmed, you can get it for a great price over at theautomationschool.com. That price will expire when the course is done. So um, it's what we call a pre-order early access price. So you can jump in early, get a great price. A bunch of my existing students have already jumped on that price. Um, and I want to say thank you to them because they, they keep me going. But in any case, um, just wanted to point that out. If you want Compact Logics training, you can get it at a phenomenal price right now over at theautomationschool.com. And the course is taught by yours truly, and we'll be using a lot of the equipment you see here. But with that said, um, let's take a look at what comes in this box here. So here you can see that we get the uh, controller itself, a 5380. Um, and it says down here, it's a little hard to see, but it says it comes with a 365-day temporary activation file. I didn't even know they made one-year temporary activations, but they do. I don't need it. I already own the software. But... Um, in any case, you can't order it without it. I wish I could. And 90-day access to tech support. Well, I need the uh, latest versions to update all my other courses, to update my VUSC, my Panel View Plus, my Control Logics course. So I went out and purchased a Tech Connect. Um, so I'm not going to have any use for that either. So it's kind of a shame that those come with it and you couldn't pull those out and get a uh, better price. But in any case, it is what it is. If you're brand new to Rockwell's products, those will be extremely helpful. Um, because, again, the price on this unit is... Uh, is really, really good. And if we take a look here, we can see the part number. So if you want to call your local representative and get a quotation on this guy, it is 5069STRT10. Now, um, this is a uh, like a starter pack. It's not a keep going pack. So you can't just keep buying these and putting them in machines. That's not what they're designed for. Uh, the contents that are in this guy, it looks like we have... Well, let's see. We have an L306ERM. Wow, that's good. They give you the ERM. Wow, nice. That The M standing for motion support. They give you um, an Ethernet cable. That's the 1585. They give you an IB16F and an OB16, so two DC cards. I looked at the price of the analog cards for this line there. Anywhere from $500 to $800, so fairly, fairly pricey. You get some new analog cards for it. But... Um, in any case, you get a uh, 2080 power supply. That's the old uh, micro, I shouldn't say old. That's the micro 800 power supply. So um, that doesn't actually look like this, but we'll see when we open it up. And um, let's see, we get a, a terminal blocks for the I.O. cards. If I remember correctly, this line requires you to order the terminal blocks separately, just like the control logics. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Um, you know, if, if you're going to use the 5380. And uh, as we showed you previously in the Automation Minute, you can use IAB to, um, you know, put together a system and make sure you're not forgetting anything. 
All right, so let's go ahead. I already cut the factory seal. Once you do that, you typically can't return it without a restocking charge, or you can't return it. But uh, let's go ahead and open this bad boy up here. And um, looks like I gotta yank this whole thing out. Let's see if I can do this gracefully here. Whoa, that was noisy. I'll put that guy one side. And what do we have here? Ooh, the front's falling out. Okay, let's open this guy up. Ooh, and look at, ooh, look at all kinds of things falling out. This looks like the documentation set. And um, just gives me the part number again. Uh, it tells me if it includes HMI, no. I didn't know there was a, I asked, actually asked if there was a version of this <laughs> that had the HMI. There wasn't, I wish there was. I actually waited for six months, hoping they would come out with one, but they don't, they didn't have one. Um, in any case, uh, it gives you uh, information there on how to register your free um, 90 days worth of free tech support and uh, more information. Let's see what else is in here. Okay, support to his links. You can't click on them because they're on paper, but they give you that. Well, let's see. We got the uh, documentation here, the power supply, micro under power supply, the controller documentation. This is, uh, I wonder if this guy's very helpful. Uh, removable terminal block documentation, IO syncing input module. So this probably has the wiring diagrams, I'm gonna guess, which is really what you want, right? You wanna be able to wire those guys. Uh, let's see here, dimensions. Is it really less expensive to make it like this? I don't know, I don't know. Let's see here, what do we got? I'm looking for the wiring diagram, guys. Oh, here it is, finally. Okay. Let's see if we can take a look at that right there. So that will show us how to wire this particular uh, module. And uh, just to save time, I'm not going to go through and try to find it for the other module. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I kind of like these little books better. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Let me know what you think. Um, you guys can always uh, reach me over at theautomationforums.com. I try to check that every day, answer people's questions. I don't know the answer to everything. Sometimes people ask me about old equipment. If I don't have it, I can't even try it myself. So, But I try. I get a lot of panel view questions, a lot of PLC questions over there. But uh, it gives me just one place to answer all questions when, you, when you're not a student, just to, you know, for all the people who find me on the blog and you know the Automation Minute, the Automation Podcast. It just gives me one place to, to answer all questions. So... Actually, it's linked into the automationblog.com too, which is very cool. Um, this looks like a standard, a standard uh, USB A to B. Okay, so we'll just put that one side. Here's our fancy <laughs> industrial Ethernet cable. Uh, you know, I'm in a uh, classroom setting, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to need that. But uh, hey, it's good to have, right? Okay, it's kind of I think a promotional thing for them. Well, let me get this out of the way. Kind of a promotional, they're promoting their, uh, their Ethernet cables. Hey, they have a full line. Okay, here it is, All right? We need like special music or something. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking like music from Halo. Anyways, um, there it is. Wow, that's a good looking unit, huh? Now, the real thing I like about these is, unlike these guys, right? You have the separate power supply. This guy has the power supply built in. That's cool, I like that. Again, there's pros and cons to that, right? But, but you know, let's get this little guy out. So this is, all right. All right, we're just gonna take the whole thing out here. It doesn't look like, uh, doesn't look like it wants to come out. That way, there we go. Okay. And fold this open here, pull him out. Okay, yeah, that's, so you can definitely tell. You can definitely tell. This is from a different line. This is from the Make 800 line. This is a very affordable little power supply. I like it. Um, you know, I've bought some from other vendors, and uh, you know, other people make good power supplies too. But this is this is really near the bottom of price for a power supply for an industrial class two power supply. You know, that being the difference, you can actually get some really cheap power supplies that aren't class two. But um, and maybe one day we'll have a show about class two because I could use a refresher on that as well. But in any case, um, I know how important that is based on the documentation uh, we have from Rockwell uh, for use with their products and a lot of people, people's products. So this thing's already assembled. 
Look at that. Already all put together. We got a door here. And uh, oh, yes. And I, I am so happy to now include memory cards. Isn't that great? Instead of having to pay a couple hundred bucks for an EEPROM like we used to have to do in the old days. So this is a 1784 SD2 that'll be used as our non volatile memory. And uh, here we have the uh, uh, mode switch, very much like, let's see if I can do this without breaking anything, very much like we had on the 5370. Pop that guy open and move her over. Okay, so she also came with, I wonder if this is a, which, what is this one? This is the SD1. This is an L30ER. This is a, uh, I think it was a 306 ERM. Glad it has the M on it so I can do some motion. Yeah, there it is right there. You can see the pot number right there. Okay. So, let's put this guy one back over here. I do prefer the keys. I, I like that the, uh, the older controllers all had the keys. Same key that uh, you have with the Slick 500. I got one on my keychain. Has had, you know, it's been on there for what, almost 30 years now. But uh, in any case, um, you know, if, the, if that saves money, I guess that's good. So we definitely have the USB port. That's great. All the new products have that. Um, easy to plug in. Go through the back plane. Get out the Ethernet ports. And this guy has uh, redundant Ethernet ports. I believe. Uh, in the current rev of firmware, this will support um, um, either uh, daisy chain configuration, so come in one, go out the other, um, a ring configuration, or even two separate IPs. I don't think when it first came out it supported that, but I believe that was something they added with firmware. So I'll have to check on that. If, uh, if that's wrong, I'll, uh, I'll put an update note on the video, but I think that's right. I, I remember that was... Something everybody was asking for. They wanted to have two separate IPs. In other words, they wanted to have one network for the I.O. and another network for uh, SCADA HMI. So, and that's, that's a great idea. It's a good thing to have. Um, that's why sometimes people bought the uh, 1768 because they could put two in EMBTs on the L4s. But in any case, let's see if we can take this guy apart. That's, um, that's I like the door. It's very strong. On the L7, I broke the L7 door on my L7, so... Um, we can see the bottom here. We got the, uh, these are different too, huh? You know, I really like that. Let's see. Push them in. Lift them up to click them out. Let's take a look at it from the other side here. So you push them down. And there's a little tab there and they release. It seems cool. All right. So we get this end cover here. Let's take a look at the side. And that comes with it as well, thank goodness, covering the bus. Looks a lot like Point I.O. I don't have, where's my Point I.O.? Hold on, I'll be right back. I'll get some Point I.O. And uh, let's see. Just grab this rack here. So if we look at the Point I.O., it looks very similar, a little bit beefier than the, uh, than the Point I.O., but very similar style, different. Then if we looked at the 1769, right, which I like, I like the way the 1769 works with the, with the, uh, you know, we can use that slider to connect the bus. I like this design. It's very hardy, but Rockwell's gone with this design. So it is what it is, right? All right. So with that said, let's see how we can slide these apart. Very nice. Okay. You can see that. And let's take a look at how these terminal blocks come off. I'm, I'm uh, assuming, let's watch me break it. Let's see here. Hmm. Oh, pull it out. Oh, pull straight out. It's not like a 1771. You don't push down and lift up. Okay, so that's pretty cool actually. Again, this is my first time using this. So go in straight, push in, push in. All right. I like it. This is the OB16. So DC output, I'm assuming OB, so it's a sourcing output. That would make sense. Let's see what it says on the label here. Uh, I'm not seeing it. DC output module. Hmm. I wonder if it's syncing and sourcing. We'll have to look that up in the book. 
Uh, no, it's sourcing. This way, let me show you the book here. 16 point sourcing output module, OB16. All right, and uh, let's slide this guy off. And we'll take a look at him. Again, all right, let's see if we can do this right. Pull straight out and then pull. Okay. All right. Man, those uh, LEDs have to travel a long, long way to get to the front of the unit. Um, no, it looks good. Looks good. I can't wait to power it up and start teaching on this in my Compact Basics course. So let's go ahead and put this back together. Whoops, you got to put the bottom in there. Slide it in, push it in, slide, whoops. <laughs> Sometimes it can be hard to try to assemble this stuff while you're on the camera, you know? There we go. How's that? That one in there. That one in there. You know, I don't blame them for not making a power supply that's the same uh, form fit, you know, as, as the unit. But uh, it would have been nice, you know, it would have been nice. But hey, that's what you got. So um, at this point, that's what comes in the box. So you get the processor with integral power supply, those terminal blocks. You get the DC and DC out with those terminal blocks. You get the uh, micro 800, uh, 120 volt, or I believe 240 volt, 120 or 240. Yeah, 120 or 240 says right there, to uh, 24 volts DC. Um, you get the USB port on the process of the redundant Ethernet. And um, you get a year copy or year temporary, <laughs> a temporary activation that lasts for a year for uh, the RS, I believe it's RS Logics Mini. I checked on that too. It's not the one with all the languages, the light version. It's the uh, mini version, according to the documentation. And, um, you know, so you get some miscellaneous stuff. So you also get the 90 day uh, tech support. Uh, you get the Ethernet cable. You get the USB cable. So you can see the partners on that. And that is pretty much what you get. So um, I'm looking forward to trying this out. You know, if you're interested in getting one, contact your local uh, Rockwell representative. They should give you a, uh, really give you a great price on this. And, um, you know, that, that, uh, that's one way to get started with it. You know, and you could pair this up with my compact basis course where I'm going to be at cover all of them. I'm, you know, like I always do, I like to go through the entire family and the hardware section of my course. I like to cover the entire family. So the panel view plus, I went from the original panel view plus all the way through the six and seven on the control logics. I started at the L1 and went all the way through the L7. The L8, I mentioned it, but it wasn't out at the time when I when I filmed it. Um, and uh, of course, with my compact basics, I'm going to cover everything from I got an L30, an L23, um, you know, cover the L3, L35E, L35C, um, L4s. I also got uh, the L the 5370 and now the 5380. So we'll cover all that. And you can find out more about that over at theautomationschool.com. But that's it for this episode of The Automation Show. Let me know what you think. Do you like this new, longer, relaxed format? I think I do because I don't have to practice. I just live stream it, and then publish it, and, and then uh, you guys can contact me over at the Automation Forums about it. Um, I think for our next show, we're going to try to live stream every Friday. For our next show, I believe we're going to do the ANC Data Hybrid Plus Cables. The good people over at ANC sent me uh, some standalone Ethernet the Data Highway Plus. So we'll do that over at Studio B, and uh, we'll have a, a Select 504, we'll have a, a PLC5, and we'll see if we can't uh, communicate with them easily via Ethernet um, through those devices. So that's what I'm planning on doing next Friday. We'll live stream it, and then um, we'll post a high-definition video after the fact um, later in the day. But with that, that's it. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a like, leave me a comment. And if you have any questions, again, just hit me over at theautomationforums.com. And with that, my name is Sean Tierney from The Automation School. Until next time, I want to wish you peace.